Every good painting starts with a good idea. I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to capture when I pulled over on the side of Highway 163 for this iconic view. I was using my fingers to help approximate the placement and the size of the monuments on my canvas. I was checking the total width and the height. Establishing your heights and your widths first will set you up to make more complicated shapes more confidently. I started resolving from the right hand side. I had my horizon line blocked out and I also had the height blocked out. I noticed that the height of the monument on the right hand side is equal to about a third of the length. After I have that very basic structure of the heights and the widths measured out, it acts as the foundation for more complex measurements and more complex drawing. The shapes of these monuments are very particular and I want to capture their specific care. I'm trying to carefully follow the contour of the monuments up against the sky. Every time the plane goes up, cuts across, or comes back down, or juts out at an angle, I'm trying to be very conscious of all of that information. I'm considering the shape, but I'm also considering the angle and the alignments. I'm trying to balance the two-dimensional aspect of my vision with the three-dimensional aspect of the form that I'm trying to represent. Sometimes we don't get it right on the first hand try. I noticed that the monuments are actually going a little too far to the left and they were jutting off of the canvas. And so I brought them back in, made things a little bit smaller and I made room for the monuments on the far left to have that deep atmosphere where you're really looking through and seeing that depth. Now the drawing doesn't need to be super detailed, but it needs to be accurate. The drawing stage also essentially serves as the design stage and the composition stage. I'll note one major consideration in this composition, and that was a low horizon line. A low horizon line, sometimes called a heroic view, that sets up a feeling of grandiosity. The next stage for me is, as always, blocking in the painting, starting to mix the color and starting to cover the white of the canvas. The main challenge with this painting is to try to capture the sense of atmosphere from the massive distance between me and these enormous monuments. There are a few rules of atmospheric perspective that I'm keeping in mind as I'm mixing my colors and blocking in the painting. I'm thinking about how atmospheric perspective decreases contrast the further away you go. I first started with a general mixture for the monuments. I'm keeping the shadows and the lights very compressed. Atmospheric perspective affects shadows much more quicker than it affects the lights. And that's why you see the shadows in the distance much lighter than any in the foreground. I don't necessarily have any foreground shadows at the moment, but I'm keeping all this information on the back of my head. The monuments on the far left of my painting are a touch bluer and a touch lighter than the shadows of the monuments that are on the right hand side, thus enhancing the atmospheric perspective. The color of the sky is also affected by atmospheric perspective. Looking towards the horizon, we are actually looking through more atmosphere than when we are looking up in the middle of the sky. If we look up in the middle of the sky, we look through relatively little atmosphere until we're looking out into the distant void of the universe. But when we're looking just above the atmosphere, we're looking tangentially, cutting across the atmosphere. This also has to do with some different fraction of light, but practically speaking, the color zones of the sky are generally lighter, warmer towards the horizon. Towards the top, they are slightly darker, bluer. Be careful to not get too confused with the clouds. The clouds are actually lighter as they get higher up in the atmosphere, the white parts anyway, because there's less contrast and there's less atmosphere, and the atmosphere actually acts to somewhat neutralize. Closer to the horizon, the white of the clouds is actually a little bit darker. The shadows of the clouds are actually a little bit lighter and a little bit bluer. I've also gone ahead and indicated some of the details in, I guess, what's the foreground planes. These little dark accents indicating some bushes or desert vegetation starts to help imply that subtle effect of atmospheric perspective. I was painting this during midday, about between 1 and 3 p.m. During that time, the sun was constantly shifting. At a certain point, I had to move my easel sideways in order to avoid painting in the shadows. At this point, I have everything blocked in and I'm starting to get back into the details. I go back into the monuments with a small brush, refining the contour, planes, and adding some small details and clearing up the design. The painting is progressing from its biggest elements to its smallest elements. I have the large masses and zones of color laid out. I'm starting to indicate some of the texture not only on the monuments, but also on the foreground plane, desert vegetation. One of the unique things about oil paint is how long it stays wet and how long you're able to work into it. As I'm going in and painting all these details, with every brushstroke, the paint is actually being mixed in ever so slightly with what's already there. Compared to other mediums, this allows for more subtlety. My usual technique involves covering the canvas and then working into that layer. I've constantly been working, readjusting the drawing, adding more details to the different layers of rock, separating out that distance, adding hints of shadows to the clouds, pushing the atmospheric perspective, 
bringing in more foreground detail. It's something of a circular process that in reality takes a lot of time to develop. I'm carefully adjusting every single shape, adding variety in the texture and the color, really focusing on the material of what it is that I'm painting, straggling that line of creating a two-dimensional painting, but depicting something that's three-dimensional and has depth and air and atmosphere. All of these things build on top of each other and hopefully culminate in capturing the essence of a scene or a view. It's a pretty beautiful world out there. I'm always thankful to be able to get out there and paint in the open air, especially with a view like that.